iOS 18 is here with a host of updates to Apple's native apps, including some notable improvements in calendar, notes, reminders, and more. Let's check out what got updated on some of the apps that I use every day, starting with Apple Notes. Audio. You can finally record audio in Apple Notes, and it has the benefit of transcription being built in. This is amazing. Previously, you could do this with third-party apps. Things like Notability or OneNote could record audio if you used those as your note-taking apps. It was notably absent in Apple Notes. You would have to work around and use Voice Recorder on the iPhone and copy and paste that into the Apple Notes, and transcription was missing. Having this built into Notes for students is going to be a big deal. Recording lectures will save you some time, and having transcription built in means that this thing will be searchable as well throughout Apple Notes, just like almost every other input method that you have at your fingertips. Next is handwriting. When you're using the Apple Pencil and you delete a word, the rest of your handwritten text will move backwards just like it's typed text. Now, I'm not as excited about this. It's kind of a cool improvement, but it takes a step away from what writing in an actual notebook feels like. So I'll try it out. Maybe it feels a little bit more natural than it sounds reading it on paper. Math notes. Everybody was wondering why Apple didn't make a calculator app for the iPad for so many years. While most of us would have been happy with just a simple calculator, Math Notes built into Apple Notes and the calculator app is one of those things that only Apple would think of. As an engineering student, I would have loved this feature, the countless trees that we wasted writing out calculus and physics problems only to turn them in and then subsequently throw them away when we got our grades back is just embarrassing. For those of us who learn visually, I think Math Notes is a great addition to the Apple Notes and Calculator app on the iPad. And lastly, highlights and collapsing sections. So this is something I've complained about before in my previous Apple Notes video was, why is it so hard to highlight things in Apple Notes? Well, Gone are those days, it's much easier to just select and highlight whatever you want now. And if you use the headings and subheadings features like I do in Apple Notes, you can now collapse them and it's much easier to move entire blocks of text in a heading group from a, the bottom of the note all the way up to the top of the note or place it wherever you want via drag and drop. I keep all of my ideas for this YouTube channel in one big Apple Note and it's got probably a hundred lines in it, and it's really difficult sometimes to move those things around. Now this is much easier with the select and drag and drop. I have headings and subheadings in there. I separate ideas out, whether they'd be more well-suited for short form or long form, or if they're a specific thing that has to deal with Apple devices or apps, camera equipment, so on and so forth. I'm really excited about this somewhat simple solution. Apps like Obsidian and Drafts let you move blocks of text around. It, it's a little bit closer to Markdown support, but it's not quite all the way there yet. Maybe we'll see that in the future for Apple Notes. Next up, Apple Reminders. Reminders got a huge update and now puts Apple Reminders inside of Calendar. And when you open both apps, it lets you know that your reminders are now in your calendar. So. Creating reminders in calendar is something that I use Fantastical for and have used it for a long time with both Apple Reminders and Todoist. Seeing it come to the first party apps is great. Next, you get subtasks in smart lists. I didn't really realize that you couldn't see subtasks in smart lists or other views like today and scheduled. I do use subtasks, but I use them in a non-smart list. So my YouTube video, a lot of these things have a lot of different things that I need to do. And I do use subtasks. You can hide and show them, but you generally see them when you go into that view. So that's a nice uh, quality of life improvement for people who might have a different setup than I do. Recently deleted was highlighted as something new. I didn't actually realize either that you couldn't see deleted tasks, but that's a nice feature in case you deleted something accidentally or needed to recover it for whatever reason. And they say, and lots more, including new shortcuts, reordering sections in the today view and new languages for the grocery list. So some notable improvements there in addition to the big features. 
calendar, Apple Calendar. Like I said, both of these, when you open them up, it lets you know that you have scheduled reminders now inside of the calendar. I love this for people who don't want to pay for something like Fantastical. I'm suckered into that for now and probably forever. I like the interface in Fantastical. But I do think that having calendar and reminders together really does help overall productivity, giving you that bird's eye view of what you have going on. And you get a new month view. If you use the month view, you can pinch zoom in and out to get it just how you like it. I actually like this as well. This is a much better UI for the Apple Calendar interface than the old interface. And it might actually be good enough for me to use it. And the Apple Photos app, love it or hate it. This is one of the things that when I upgraded to, I tell my wife, well, you're gonna hate the Photos app and how it looks in iOS 18. So just get ready. But love it or hate it, I do think that this is a nice visual update. It certainly makes the Photos app look a little bit more modern. And in my opinion, the customization that comes along with it, which was noted here, makes it a little bit easier to navigate and find files of certain variety. So I often go in and want to look for any photo that I shot in RAW. And I often go in and look for screenshots or videos of screen recording. So being able to search by those things quickly, and I have that customized down at the bottom to be one of the first things that I can select, is a lot nicer for me than the way the old Photos app had you search and filter. Passwords is now its own application. I assume many people are going to be looking to drop things like 1Password or BitLocker now that Apple has its own password management app. Personally, I still use 1Password. I've kept it around because I have a Windows machine over here. I rarely use it now. I'm almost 100% in the Apple ecosystem. I am thinking that I'm going to clear out everything that is already in my passwords app in Apple from days of past when it was managed by Safari and try to transfer everything from 1Password and see if I would be able to use the Apple Passwords app as my daily driver. The flip side to that is 1Password is so affordable that it almost doesn't make sense to go through the hassle of trying to switch to a new app, but we'll see how it goes. Apple Fitness had a lot of changes as well, including a new customizable summary. You can go in and change the app to show things like step count or weekly miles and more. If you've used Garmin in the past, the Garmin Connect app has let you customize things like this for a long time. Fitness Plus also got revamped a little bit. It now gives you the option to include any workouts you do in Fitness Plus or workouts outside of Fitness Plus in order to give you a customized view of suggested workouts. As long as those workouts outside of Fitness Plus are writing into Apple Health Kit, it will also take into account any medication, any medication, any meditation or mindfulness uh, that you do as well. I think that's a nice feature. Flexible goals for your activity rings on the Apple Watch is now a thing, so you can pause them or take rest days or whatever. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I really like the Apple rings and the challenges that come along with it. I'm not sure I'm going to be pausing my rings in order to elongate my streak or get a badge or whatever. And lastly, training load is a great improvement in Apple Fitness and on the Apple Watch. I really like this metric. I use it in a third-party app called Athletic to see short-term and long-term training load to try to get an idea for, am I overstressing my body? Am I not doing enough? Am I finding a nice balance between working out and resting and recovering? And a few minor updates to music, podcast, and maps. So in Apple Music, Browse is now called New, so they say, and you get share play on more devices. Not sure exactly what devices you get Apple Music on now that you didn't get it before. Apple Podcasts gets precise sharing. So if you're in a podcast and you want to share just a specific section like you can do on a YouTube video or you share it to your friend and it starts at a certain timestamp, you can do that now with Apple Podcasts. They claim they've got faster search and more playback control in the Apple Podcasts app. Reorder your queue and navigate by chapter when available. And lastly, for you outdoors folks, Apple Maps now has hikes and custom routes. 
Now, I don't think this is going to replace something like All Trails or any of the other third-party applications yet, but it's nice to see that Apple is at least trying and working on improving their maps and their navigation between Apple Maps and the watch when it comes to outdoor activities like hiking. That about wraps up the major changes to the Apple apps that were updated in iOS 18. There's plenty more updates and customization throughout the operating system that was added. So subscribe for more and we'll see you in the next one. Later.